So I've gotten a few comments uh, of those of you that would like to see a video on this. And today I'm just going to kind of briefly cover how you go about getting a CNR FFL. Uh, in particular, that is a Type 3 uh, FFL, which is a collector of curios and relics. And as many of you know, a curio or relic firearm is one that is at least 50 years of age or older um, and has some sort of collectability, historical significance, etc., the ATF has a published book, um, I guess you could say PDF book, um, that lists all these firearms that are eligible. Um, and what you're seeing here is their website. I will post a link down in the description on this of how you get here. Um, but some of the quick things I want to point out is a Cure and Relic Firearms License. Um, one of the nice things about it is... It enables you to buy a curio or relic firearm and have it shipped straight to your door um, because you possess a license, a collector's license, a collector's FFL, um, and you don't have to go through a background check at a at a dealer, you know, like a Type Five or Type Seven or whatever all the other types are. Um, but you know, for the cost of thirty dollars, the application cost is thirty dollars for the license, um, and it lasts for three years once you're approved. Um, you know, that's the cost of one background check. Um, so it'll save you a lot of money in the long run. Actually, it'll save you a lot of money up front. Even if you only ever buy two, uh, Curio and Relic firearms in a span of three years. Um, now one of the things I'm going to state is I am by no means offering any sort of legal advice. And if you accept any advice from me, you do so at your own risk. I'm just going to throw that disclaimer out there. Um, but anyway, I'm going to try to cover some of the high points of this today. It's really not hard. Um, just takes a little bit of time and effort. Um, so here we are on the ATF's website. Uh, this is, and like I said, I'll put a link down in the description on this. Um, this is instructions for Form 7-7CR, Application for Federal Firearms License. And before I dive off into this, one of the cool things about getting your CNR FFL is because of the type of license, you do not have to have a two by two photo of yourself and you do not have to supply a fingerprint card. They run the background check on you when you apply for the license and you submit your fee. And there's one other thing you have to do, which is submitting a, a letter of uh, intent uh, to your local uh, law enforcement personnel. Um, I'll get into that a little bit later. I'll also show you an example of that. Um, but it's really quite simple. So we're just going to take a look at this form here, uh, this 7 slash 7 CR. We're going to open that up. All right. So let's dive off into this. This is your application for a federal firearms license um, from the BATFE. All right. So starting off with item number one, you're going to check this as a collector because regardless of, um, you know, any other purpose, we're filling this out as though we are intending to get a CNR FFL. So you're going to check the checkbox in item number one for collector here. For number two, you're going to put its licensee name. So this is going to be your name. Most of you are going to be individuals that are doing this out of your own household. That's how I'd be filling this out. So I would put my name here. Um, if you want to call it any particular uh, name, like I don't know, Joe Bob's collectors, firearms, or whatever. You can list that there in item in item three. I left mine blank. Item number four, in this case, you would also leave blank. However, item number five, you would put the county in which you are located. Um, item number six, business activity address. In most instances, this is going to be your home mailing address. Because um, usually they're one and the same. But if you have a P.O. box... Um, you can put that here in item number seven. Note, item number six cannot be a P.O. box. So just moving right along, we're going to get into item number eight. <clears throat> Those are contact numbers. Include the area code. I would highly advise you to list a number by which you can be contacted. Because if the ATF ever decides to call and they want to come inspect your book, they have to be able to reach you. And it'd be better than them just showing up unannounced. So... You would list that here. 
Um, describe this item number nine. Describe the specific activity applicant is engaged in or intends to be engaged in, which requires a federal firearms license. I believe I just listed in here. I just wrote it out and put collector of curio and relics, you know, or collector of curio and relic firearms. Nothing fancy, nothing special. So moving along to item 10. This shows you a listing of all the different FFLs, types of FFLs you can apply for. There's pretty good, pretty good number of them here. Um, so what we will be focused on is type 03. That is a collector of curios and relics. Note, this is not a license to conduct business. And the fee here is $30. So one thing I'm going to point out. As a curio and relic collector, you are not in the business of buying and selling firearms. However, there is a caveat. Occasionally, now I, don't, I can't define that for you, but occasionally, let's say you have, for instance, I don't know, a couple of Mosin Nagants. Let's say you want to sell one in order to further your collection to acquire something like, let's say, maybe a 1903 A3. That is permissible, but... You better not be in the business of buying and selling because then you're violating what a Type 03 collector's license is for. Just wanted to throw that out there. Then you'll just go down to your method of payment. You guys are pretty smart. You can figure this out. I believe I sent in a money order when I did mine. But if you want to use a bank card where you can track it and see where they are in the process, you know, you can do that here. Of course, you will also sign and date that. <clears throat> I apologize, I have allergies, so you're going to hear me clear my throat a lot. All right, item number 12, hours of operation and or availability of business activity. So, you must indicate at least one hour by which you can be contacted by ATF personnel. If you guys, a lot of them probably like me, uh, I mean, you probably have a job, you work, um, you know, you can put a weekend. I think I listed for like a couple hours on the weekend where they contact me. You just put like, let's say 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. You would just list that here and you'd list it under the day. Um, of course, you indicate a.m. or p.m. It's not hard. Um, and then you'll note in this gray area, if you're only applying for a type three collector, curios and relics license, skip items 13 through 17 and go to item 18. So we're going to skip all this. Go down to item number 18. Name of Chief Law Enforcement Officer, otherwise known as CLEO. You're going to list the name of whom a copy of this application was provided. Now, in my instance, I listed the county sheriff. And then in item number 19, I also listed where that sheriff's office was located, along with the county in that box to the bottom right. Um, and you'll see a copy of that letter here in a minute. And then you kind of see under this attention, chief law enforcement officer, it's instructions basically to, to them, you know, what this is, why this is being sent to them. And the letter that I'll show you guys a screenshot of will also display that. <clears throat> basically, you're just notifying them what you're doing. So you get down in here to item number 20, applicant certification, please read initial each box. I'm not going to belabor this. You guys can read. It's not hard. Um, and then basically you're going to print your name. You're going to sign it and date it. Um, then you got a section here at the bottom that's for the ATF. Okay, so <clears throat> then you get into Part B, Responsible Person Questionnaire. You don't have to um, have another responsible party. Um, but in this case, um, you will fill this out for yourself. I filled this out for myself. You know, put my name here. Um, obviously I didn't have an existing FFL, so that was blank. You know, I would just fill all this out here. You got all your, uh, nitty gritty details about yourself. You know, it's pretty easy stuff. A lot of questions about, you know, Hey, have you ever owned a, had a federal firearms license before you've been denied, blah, blah, blah. Simple questions. Yes and no, you know, it's not, not hard stuff. A lot of it looks exactly like a NICS check. Um, you know, country citizenship, you know, all this stuff. And you'll just go through and basically then you'll sign and print and date your name. <clears throat> Very simple. So then you get down here 
where they're talking about two by two photograph. Obviously, you don't have to do that with a Type 3 FFL. And then you have information here on where you're to mail this off to. It's the Federal Firearms Licensing Center in Portland, Oregon. And yes, in case you guys are concerned, I recently renewed my FFL. I got it back in about a month. So it didn't just go off into la-la land and sit there. It came in pretty quick. And note this here. You guys might be able to see my cursor. Oh, oops. Sorry. Hopefully you can. Type 3 applicants, photograph and fingerprint card are not required if you're applying for a Type 3 collector of curios and relics license only. And also they have a nice little 1-800 or 1866 number where you can contact them if you've got questions. <clears throat> I highly recommend that if you do have questions. So then you get down in, they actually have you instructions. Uh, by the way, they tell you to use a ballpoint pen or type. Uh, you can fill this PDF out online, I believe, but you still got to do a lot of signing and dating. Um, and, you know, it's very simple. You've got all this information here. You just go through it. It's not hard whatsoever. It's, it is a little time consuming, but it's worth it. Then they got a listing of definitions of everything they talk about throughout the process of the form. You know, you're going to go through all this, Privacy Act. So then you're going to get down to this uh, Part A. Or, well, you get down to the continuation here. And you're going to fill this out again. What the second part of this form is, it's a duplicate of the first. But I'll kind of show you. You'll, you'll fill this out. And you see a lot of this information is grayed out. This is the CLEO copy. This is the copy of that form that gets sent off to the chief law enforcement officer. You're going to send it's it's a duplicate of the very first part. This whole second part is what you're going to be sending off to your county sheriff or chief of police or whoever it is you're going to send it to. Um, so anyway, you'll just fill every bit of that out. Um, and that goes to your CLEO. So there's your form. Um, so now what we're going to take a look at is this. This is the CLEO letter. Now, this is not displaying well. I apologize. So, you got your chief law enforcement name, mailing address, title. This form is pre-filled out for you. Um, you guys can pause this video right here so you can see it. This is exactly how I did my form. This is how I sent it off to them with that second half of that CNR uh, application. And this is what I sent them. It's nothing terrible. Um, you're just informing them of what it is you're planning on doing per the guidelines laid out by the ATF. So, I mean, you just, you just fill this in. Uh, you can create this in Word. You can write it out by hand if you want. It does not matter to me. I would suggest typing it up and printing it out so that, you know, if you've got chicken scratch like me, hopefully they can read it. So like I said, you're going to take this, what you see on your screen right now, and you're going to take that second half of that CNR application, the one that's got all the grade stuff, say, lay, uh, the, the grayed out areas that says CLEO copy, and you're going to mail that off to your chief law enforcement officer. You're going to take the other half along with your payment, and you're going to send that into the FFL. And processing time usually takes, I think the very first time for me, it took three to four months, but, but there's a caveat. I did that during right at the start of the pandemic. That was in 2020. Um, so I think some of that could have had, could have been uh, due to the pandemic. I don't know. Um, but I do know the renewal literally only took one month. It was very quick. Um, so one of the things that you're going to do after that, um, once you get your FFL in the mail, is... If you go out and certain websites like AIM Surplus, Classic Firearms, Royal Tiger Imports, Atlantic Firearms, JG Sells, um, Century Arms International, uh, Axis Arms, uh, there's, a ton, there's a ton of them. A lot of times they'll have FAQs and a lot of times you can email a copy of your FFL to them. They'll just file it away and keep it on file you know, for three years because that's how long they're good for. Um, and then sometimes let's say you're on proxy bid or gun broker or high bid, you know, you can buy CNR firearms on there as well. Um, a lot of times at the close of the auction, at the close of the auction, what you're going to end up doing is sending them a copy of your FFL. Um, 
I highly recommend you keep the original and that you make copies of it. And those are the copies that you sign and email or mail to whoever it is you're going to when you're doing a transfer. Um, that way you've always got your original. Um, but that's basically it. It's That's it in a nutshell. Um, if you guys got any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comment section. I'll try to answer as best I can. But don't forget, you got a 1866 number at your fingertips. I know you guys probably don't want to talk to the ATF, but you know, you've got that number there if you want to call them up and you got questions and, you know, the instructions and everything else in the form don't don't spell it out for you. Um I will also tell you I'll do a follow-up video on this. Uh you will need a bound book. Um, and the ATF will tell you that when they send you your license, you'll need to get in your hands a bound book, uh, to record your firearms transactions, i.e. what, anything that you buy. And that is basically your records book. That is the CNR rifles that you buy. Um, and at any point in time, the ATF can inspect that. That's the caveat. Um, so you'll want to you'll want to get one of those. I think they have them on Amazon. I can't provide a link here because they'll strip my video out because they'll say that I'm trying to sell something. Um, but Amazon has a very nice one. I'll try to throw a screenshot up here so you can see the one I have. So that if you search for it, you can kind of find it. It's it's pretty nice. Um, but anyway, uh, if you guys like this video, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and uh, help grow the channel as much as possible. Um, and like I said, if you got any questions, just hit me up in the comments. I'll try to answer them as best I can, uh, since I've been through the process at least once. Um, and you know, share with your friends. Um, you know, like I said, this is very cost effective. It's much cheaper than trying to, you know, do a background check every single time, you know, having it shipped to another FFL, you know, in this case, you're the FFL. And it comes straight to your door. You just got to be here to sign for it. You know, 21 and older has to sign for packages like that. Uh, so you have to be the one to sign for it. Um, I think that's really all I got. So, hey, thanks for watching, everybody. Like I said, if you like the video, hit the like, subscribe button. Uh, still slowly marching my way to 1,000 subscribers. I'll do something cool for that. Um, but thanks for watching, guys. And uh, you have a great day.